to see you, Ryan. It's good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's, it's good to be here. It's, um, oops. <clears throat> like, like, I mean, a, a hip record is a cause for celebration at any time because it's beautiful. We get to go down this road with you. And then, you know, recently seeing The National in your interview with Wendy Mesley, then there's this whole other thing that comes with it. When you got the word about your wife's diagnosis, what, tell me, what, what was that avalanche like? Um, well, I was going through my notebooks, uh, and I keep notebooks for things like um, groceries and um, pithy comments um, with which to, you know, regale you. <laughs> what to say to George, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And I remember going back to that day just the other day. You're an intensely private man, and this isn't an abstract thought you're putting out here. You're talking about nurses. You're talking about very direct things. What was that decision process like for you? Well, I couldn't really, um, I couldn't really do anything about it. You know, I was writing, I wanted to, uh, there's a lot of emotions, you know, anger, fear, uh, impatience. Impatience is a big one. Um, love, you know, you're just uh, clamoring to, to help. So, um, you know, when Laura was uh, free and clear, uh, we went, got back into it in the studio um, it's sort of hard to write during, because uh, that felt, you know, I don't know, somehow not right. I don't know. I was taking little notes, maybe. But um, once she was free and clear, we went into the studio to finish the record, which had been put on hold. Um, uh, everything had to achieve a standard, I thought, of uh, reality, you know. And illusion wasn't really cutting it, and to the extent that I have contributed to the illusion machine all these years, um, and to the extent that I tried to extricate myself from the illusion machine now was very basic. You know, I wanted to write um, fairly clearly, openly. Um, but having said that, um, I still write the way I write. And it maybe is not entirely obvious, but I thought it would be obvious to the people to whom it would be obvious. Mm -hmm. Does it, I mean, you've always been a staunch environmental supporters, community supporters. You take a look at communities all across this country that are going through unbelievable assault on an environmental level, which contributes to, to the, the poor health and lack of well-being for many people. Does it just sort of solidify your anger in that respect? I don't know if it's anger, but I don't know that you can go around and cut environmental assessments where a community is allowed to sort of assess the safety of a project. I don't think you can gut the Fisheries Act. I don't think that you can throw over science and research for ideology, you know, and not expect there to be casualties. There will be blood if you're going to do that. Right. Toxins go to the fatty tissues, and everybody knows that. You know, the last song is called Goodnight Attawapas Cat on this. It's, why that, first of all? Um, if you read about the communities along James Bay, uh, Western Shore there, you know kind of what they're going through in various forms and ways. You know, and you reconcile that with the people that you meet. And um, everyone's like you and me, they're except way funnier, you know, way cooler. Yeah. And, um, and way tougher. Yeah. But um, and gentler. And uh, anyway, I'm maybe not painting an accurate picture, but at least I'm trying to paint a picture right. that isn't the picture that we all just sort of accept and and forget about. We play a clip. This is where the, you know, where the hip goes and the things that they do. Take a look at this from not that long ago. They're at the Great Moon Gathering. Was that Northern Revolution you're on stage with? Northern Revolution. The best part about that, I believe that the that video was filmed off the, from the phone from a mother of one of the people that was on stage with yeah. you. I mean, just that's what a trip that must have been for you to be up there. You were Joe Boyden, right? Yeah, and the band. And Joe asked us to go up because he was the keynote speaker. And would we come up? And in that particular case, they asked me to sing Knocking on Heaven's Door, and they were pretty particular that it was the Guns N' Roses version. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, no problem, you know. 
Right. It's like, no, it's, it's different. And, um, and then they told me that their singer, uh, whose name is eluding me right now, I got it wrong in the evening too, and said it about seven times in the <laughs> mic. Um, but they wanted to, they told her to take a, a seat so that I could sing the song. Right. And I was like, you never throw over your singer. What are you doing? She's your singer. <laughs> She's coming up here with us. And she's like, no, it's okay, I, I can't hit the notes. And I was like, well, then you'll come with me. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay, cool. And, and then it was like, um, and then I introduced her onto the stage by her wrong name. <laughs> she didn't hear it, dude. I bet you she heard it right, no matter how it happened. What's her name? You must have people that can figure that out. Roseanne. Roseanne. That's her name, Roseanne. I'd like to call Roseanne to the stage right now. <laughs> You never throw up your singer, and she's gonna help me sing. <laughs> Knocking on heaven's door, put it together for Roseanne. Everybody. Before we get to the, uh, you're before, good. What did you? That's good. Before we get to that part, what did you call her? Roseanne's not that hard. I, it was the music was loud. There was a band playing before, and we were side stage, and we were really nervous. And the music was blaring. Like, you're nervous because it means something, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> What's your name? Rosa. And I, I think I think I was, oh, I don't know, man. It was like, it wasn't Roseanne. <laughs> Rosette. I was it, calling her Rosette. That's close, man. That's close. <laughs> Rosette. I've never met a Rosette. So why didn't she kick me in the nuts? <laughs> are, you, uh, are you familiar with the Ken Spencer Science Park? I'm not. Okay, you know who those two are? At the Ken Spencer Science Park at Science World, there are two chickens. One is called Gord, the other is called Downy. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> uh, really, I don't know what to say. How do you wow. feel about that? <laughs> I'm still processing it. It's, uh... Stick around. More with Gord Downey right after this. Still to come, we're gonna dig into Gord's favorite childhood memory, and Sean Cullen and the panel are backstage and they're getting ready. So tonight we're talking about enemies. I yes, asked the enemy within, enemies with benefits and famous feuds. Hey, yeah. We we don't have any enemies, obviously, we're stand-up comedians. No one hates <laughs> us, right? What? We're pretty fortunate where we don't know from night to night who we're gonna be playing to and it doesn't seem like we're exclusively a college band, which to me is great, you know, because uh, sometimes in, in the college gigs, you know, you're up there and you wonder if you're basically a backdrop for, you know, some big huge beer up or something like that, and that can be more frustrating than playing to no one. Nineteen eighty-nine. My concerns are the same. <laughs> they are. Are we just a backdrop for some beer up? <laughs> What's your favorite memory from childhood? Mm. Well, it's a pretty obvious one. Um, when the Bruins won the Stanley Cup in 1972, my brother and I went out onto the... It's too obvious, right? Well, for, as a Habs fan, it brings me pain, but carry they on. They beat the Rangers. <laughs> they beat the Rangers. I was uh, eight. And my older brother and I, he was 12, we went on our driveway and danced in the rain. And we were just shocked at how eerily quiet it was. There was nobody out. <laughs> it was just us. It was one of those ones where we just sort of stopped dancing and walked back into the house. If you were to stand near the ferry to Wolf Island, near the K-Rock Center, where would you be standing? Number one, the tragically hip way. The tragically <laughs> hip way. Paul Angwa said that he doesn't drive on that street late at night because he doesn't want someone to accidentally post a picture of Facebook on him on his own street late at night. Do you ever just cruise that street just because? Um, well, we happened to be on it this summer. We were going, I think, to Paul's house, actually, with my kids. And we were at the stop sign I didn't even notice. And my wife said, hey, look. And the kids thought that was actually pretty cool. But I realized I hadn't even mentioned it to them. Um, probably because it was such a nail-biting city council vote to decide it. It was that close. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <clears throat> Seven-six. 
<laughs> you were hoping for more of a slam dunk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, but it's Kingston, and it's they're very they consider things carefully, and carefully. Right. Well, listen, congratulations. Uh, now for Plan A. It's again, you, it's another great record, man. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Go down, everybody. Glad you're here.